Welcome to Insco Insights, where we take you behind the headlines into the cutting edge world of space exploration. Join us now as we talk to the people who are making it happen. Hi, I'm your host, Brooke Brown. What does it take to start a successful space business? Elon Musk says, it's having a clear and compelling vision as well as speed and agility in decision-making. Jeff Bezos says, you have to do everything from the beginning to build infrastructure that enables future generations to thrive in space exploration. Our next guest runs a successful space startup. She says, to be successful, it is important to keep an open mind. You may think you know what your business is and where you want to go, but you may end up turning down the best opportunities because you have tunnel vision, or you may think something is too big for you. Carol Craig is a notable figure in the aerospace and technology industries. She is the founder and CEO of Cytus Space, a company focused on satellite manufacturing and space-based solutions. Before Cytus Space, she founded Craig Technologies, which has grown into an industry leader in engineering, manufacturing, and technical services. She has been recognized for her achievements, including being named this year to the Forbes 50 over 50. She has also been recognized as the Small Business Administration's Small Business Person of the Year for Florida in 2015. Joining us now is Carol Craig, who is not only a trailblazer in both the military and the tech industry, she is a former Navy pilot and accomplished software engineer and is now leading the charge in space exploration with Cytus Space. Welcome, Carol. Thank you very much, Brooke. I appreciate uh, the invite and I'm excited to be here. <laughs> you had Craig Technologies going, but you decided to start Cytus Space. Why? Well, I saw a need in some ways for manufacturing and kind of marrying up engineering and manufacturing. So Craig Technologies was primarily focused on engineering and technical solutions, just like you mentioned. But there's also the other side of it. There's the manufacturing side, the prototyping side. And I had somebody come to me and suggest that maybe I start a small manufacturing division. It was just supposed to be a small little prototype shop to support the bigger engineering services, kind of the side of things. And it took on a life of its own. So many companies are manufacturing and operating satellites. What makes Cytus Space stand out from its competitors? Well, we started with very little money. That's probably one thing. You mentioned some of these big billionaires and what their thoughts on space and you know, what does it take? Well, it takes a lot of money with some people. In our case, we did not have a lot of money. We also took our company public when we decided to start moving toward a, you know, satellite constellations and manufacturing. So again, going back to that, when we, we went public, we raised money, we raised a small amount. So that makes us different. Why is that a good thing? It's because we, we operate very leanly. So, I mean, we're looking at cost being cost efficient. So that's one thing. The other thing is that when we looked at building our satellite constellation, we kind of did it backwards. Whereas some of these companies said, I've got a technology and I'm going to build a constellation around that technology. We did it the opposite. We looked at the idea of building sort of infrastructure or a platform that could integrate multiple technologies and the latest and greatest technology. Because technology growth, talk about Moore's law, you know, like every 18 months, you've got new technology, six months. So you're continually turning over. There's new opportunities, new technologies that apply to different industries. And we wanted to build a constellation or satellite that allowed us to evolve and grow with an evolving and growing ecosystem. Currently, you are preparing for the launch of Lizzie Sat 2. Yeah. What is the primary mission and what data and insights do you hope Lizzie Sat 2 will provide? We've got a couple different missions. Again, that's the beauty of our platform, our Lizzie Sat satellite. You can have multiple customers, multiple missions, multiple technologies. So, a couple examples that we have on Lizzie Sat 2, which my team just delivered Lizzie Sat to Vandenberg and mated it with the, uh, with the rocket. So, they're very exciting. It's now we sit and we wait. One of the technologies is space situational awareness. So we have a customer that came to us with an imager that basically looks up instead of looking down. So it's looking up for that space situational awareness and being able to detect objects and things like that. So we integrated their technology into LizzieSat2. There's a cost for that, but then at the end of the day, we will provide them the data, a monthly subscription kind of data, over the next several years of the, uh, of the satellite so that they can 
detect and provide their customers with the solutions that they're looking for. So that's one type. We also have our own sensors on there, one of those being methane detection. So we have a little more of a broader look toward methane gas. There are some methane detectors on satellites out there that are very specialized and, you know, and detailed, high fidelity. We were looking at it a little more broadly. We wouldn't be able to detect on a more general kind of scale because then that applies to a lot more industries and it's a lot less expensive. And then we combine that with another thing that we have on our satellite and that's our AI software and our hardware. And now software fixes everything. As you mentioned, I'm a software engineer, right? So I'm convinced software fixes everything. <laughs> and so that was one of the things that we looked at. We're like, well, having this solution means that we can take all of these inputs and these sensors and we can really provide actionable intelligence as opposed to just raw data. So those are kind of some of the things that are on Lizzie set too. <laughs> How do you plan to leverage your satellites and data services? Ah, that's interesting. So again, I think our biggest, the, the way that we look at what we're doing is our biggest thing is that we're saying, what are the unmet needs? As we look at all these different industries that can benefit from space, and they don't even know that they can benefit from space yet. We try to understand what are the unmet needs? What are you looking for? And then we can integrate technologies into our satellite. So it isn't being stuck with the same type of sensor, you know, for the entire life of a constellation. You know, we're able to really say, okay, here's another use case over here that I can use. Somebody wants some persistent surveillance, but they want to combine a couple types of sensors. We can do that on our satellite. So really, it, when we talk about leveraging that, I think it's just kind of making sure that we're thinking and we're having conversations with the industries and knowing what they want and not trying to sell them something that they don't need. Mm -hmm. What kind of infrastructure are you building to support satellite manufacturing, launch services, and in-orbit servicing? Yeah. So we have a facility already. We are in Cape Canaveral. We've been there for about 13 plus years. So we're building on that. So we already had that infrastructure in place, but we're continuing to, I guess, expand in the areas of, you know, better machinery, 3D printers, those kinds of things. We're also looking at expanding because we've got some international partnerships. We just signed a recent one with a company in Germany. And so we're expanding with some international partnerships. So we're looking at additional space kind of in, in the Cape Canaveral area, maybe further in Titusville so that we can grow that manufacturing and the partners. And then we also have our mission operations center that is in Merritt Islands. So that's the infrastructure and that's, that's what we got. And we're continuing to grow in that area. We're going to take a break but we will be right back with more from Carol Craig, founder and CEO of Cytus Space. When we return, we'll learn more about the companies and organizations partnering with Carol and what might be next for the serial entrepreneur. So don't go away. Long before liftoff and beyond. One team has set our trajectory for assured access to space Engine's throttling up. by taking ideas Go and throttle up. to reality. We are ENSCO, Aerospace Engineering. Welcome back to ENSCO Insights. We are talking with Carol Craig, founder and CEO of Cytus Space. Carol, when we left, you were talking about the infrastructure needed to build and operate satellites. Do you have any partners or collaborators that you are working with? Sure. So, we again, we've announced some of the uh, international partnerships that we have. Mm -hmm. We also are building 3D printed satellites. So one of our partnerships is with a company called Mark Forge, and they're the ones that have these really innovative 3D printing types of uh, machinery and uh, and some options for different types of material as opposed to typical plastics or typical um, metals. So they're one of our partners as well. And there's a number of different agencies that we, d we partner with. And we've worked with NASA for many, many years. We work with Space Florida, you name it, we partner with them. But I think the most exciting thing is looking at some of these international partnerships and being able to expand our presence globally, but then also bring their presence here to the Space Coast so that we can grow and expand with more jobs. Are you looking to add new partners? And if so, who? Ah, new partners. So we're always looking for partners. I, that's one of the things I, I believe might be a little bit missing kind of in our space industry mm -hmm. is collaboration. We shouldn't be looking at each other as competitors. I call them competimates. But really, because it's such a nascent industry, especially for smaller companies like ours, satellites, technologies, whatever it might be, I think really the way to grow and to 
to to show that the space is here and what we can do with the space ecosystem, what we can do with data is to partner together and collaborate in that way. So when you ask who, what are the partnerships, you know, there's so many. I will say there is one. We recently announced that we were selected by a company called Lone Star, which is out of Tampa, Florida, to build and manufacture and operate their uh, lunar satellite focused on data storage. I say that's a partnership because it's not just about a customer. It's about working together for the success of that mission. So it is, a, you know, we don't just take thanks for the contract. We're going to go do this and we'll see you later. We truly partner with our customers and Lone Star is a perfect example of that. You said previously that you have to be careful not to have tunnel vision, but what is your long-term vision of Cytus Space? Ah, that's a very good question. And it keeps changing a little bit only because the space ecosystem keeps changing. We keep growing, but certainly I want to continue to grow. I want to expand. I want to look at other opportunities, not just the LEO, but we're at lunar, Mars, and, and going, but I expect to grow. We want to continue to grow. We want to grow this, this area, you know, Brevard County. But I think the long term is just that we continue to capture more work and kind of show, you know, the the little engine that could or the you know, the dory just keeps swimming, just keeps swimming. You know, you may not have a lot of money, may not be a large company, but you can do really great things if you just have the passion and refuse to give up. What do you think your company's role is in shaping the future of space exploration and commercialization? Well, I think our role is just showing that we can be successful as a small business that we can take all these technologies from our satellite and provide benefits to a number of different industries that I would call non-traditional industries. So that's the commercialization side, commercialization side of it. So I think really our role is just to execute and mm -hmm. just demonstrate you know, that, that this is an industry that can benefit everybody. It's not an if, it's not a when, it's like now. Mm -hmm. We are running out of time. Thank you for joining us on Insco Insights today. We wish you continued success. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching Insco Insights. Be sure to stay connected to Space Intel Report for the latest updates on the space industry and check back here for the next episode of Insco Insights as we continue to probe the fascinating world of space exploration and technology. I'm Brooke Brown. See you next time. <laughs>